Welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. One day we will have an intro, but today is not that day. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Kalina. And welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That, where we kind of talk about movies. And this week, we are kind of talking about nothing, because it's me again, all by my lonesome. I know I told you all last week uh, that Eleanor was on the, you know, admittance committee for the Met Gala. They had to have an emergency meeting about Young Gravy. I just want to update everyone. They did, in fact, decide to let Young Gravy go. They decided that the risks were worth the positives he brought to the table. Unfortunately, this week, Eleanor is simply not here. I think because she's scared of the album, or the artist that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, Like, full disclosure, I was trying to convince her to listen to their... Well, let me introduce who I'm talking about first. Not a movie. As it says on the tin, we kind of talk about movies. And, you know, Eleanor always says an album is like kind of like a movie if you close your eyes and squint real hard. So, we're talking today about Pierce the Veil. Uh, we usually do this little series on this show called First and Last. So, kind of what it says on the tin, we pick an artist, usually one we both like, and listen to the first single they ever put out, or first whatever they ever put out, and then their latest single. Or if like they just put out an album, as in the case of this artist, whatever the first single off of that album was. So today we're talking about Pierce the Veil. I very much in school, like middle school, early high school for sure, wa- listened to Pierce the Veil, Sleeping with Sirens. Like that was my jam. Warped her, warped tour girl. You know what I mean? Um, And unfortunately, I don't know if you've all ever seen that post that's like, the music that you listened to when you were 13 and 14 and 15 will rip holes in your heart when you listen to it later. And also the other post that says, like, whatever media you were obsessed with at those ages is kind of like what you're stuck with for life. And unfortunately for me, but also fortunately for me and fortunately for you guys, I listened to a lot of Pierce the Veil and Twilight. So we're trying to avoid talking about twilight because actually this is a very exciting episode because it's coming out on the 10th of february 2023 and eleanor and i's uh i guess like the podcast and our friendship anniversary too because our friendship went hand in hand with the podcast but our friendship anniversary is in a couple days so this is technically our anniversary episode this is also our valentine's day episode but i like that was just too many things to cram into one episode so I said, I have artistic control of this episode because it's me by myself. So we're listening to Pierce the Veil. Eleanor does not like screaming music, like loud music. She likes like Fall Out Boy. I think that's probably about as heavy as Eleanor will get, you know? So Pierce the Veil is definitely my side of the tracks. And I was trying to convince her to listen to The Jaws of Life, which also comes out today, February 10th. So I thought it was a nice little lineup um, in terms of what to talk about today. But anyway, first and last, so... We're going to chat a little bit about Pierce the Veil, the first single they put out, their first album, and then the la- the first single off of the album that kind of came out today. Obviously, I haven't heard it yet because I'm chit-chatting about this before it comes out, but I'm excited to see, after this episode comes out, I'm excited to see, you know, if anyone agrees with me and and if what I said about the single for this album, their new album, um, you know, lines up with the album as a whole. And then also usually when we do first and last, we both pick a song kind of like in the middle of the artist's catalog to chit chat about one we like. We usually try to pick it from different albums. Since it's just me, I picked it my picked my favorite song off of their third album because the album that's coming out today, The Jaws of Life, is there gonna be their fifth album. So third will be right in the middle, obviously. But we'll get into it. I'll talk a little bit about Pierce the Veil, just for a little intro for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, They are an American rock band. They're from California, started in 2006. Um, The main people that at that 2006 were important was Mike Fuentes and Vic Fuentes. Vic Fuentes is the lead singer. Mike Fuentes is his brother, the drummer. And they were in a band called Before Today. Before Today disbanded, and then they formed, Mike and Vic formed Pierce the Veil. Pierce the Veil got signed to Equal Vision Records, and then... One thing I think is really interesting is their first album ever, which is called A Flare for the Dramatic, was recorded only with Mike and Vic doing 
everything. So they did vocals, they did every single instrument, and then it was produced by Vic Fuentes and Casey Bates. So that's a flair for the dramatic. 2007, it came out June 26, 2007, and the song we're going to talk about off of it is Currents Convulsive, which came out... The video for it was released June 19th of 2007, and then the album came out on June 26th. And what I find interesting is they were touring before the album even came out, because before today had a bit of a following and status and songs and like things to tour with. So they got signed very quickly to Equal Vision in on May 3rd, 2007, it says here. So that was when it was announced they had signed to Equal Vision. And then a week later, the album's artwork and track listing was released. And then in early May, they started touring with Poison the Well, and then they toured with Portugal the Man, who Casey Bates, who produced The Flair for the Dramatic, also has produced some stuff for Portugal the Man. I was doing a little Google search for y'all. And then, like I said, the current convulsive video came out on June 19th. So that was the first, that was like the clearest declaration of like, this is the first thing Pierce the Veil has put out. But at the time, again, Pierce the Veil was just these two people. Um... Right now, Pierce DeVille has three members. It's Vic Fuentes, Tony Perry, and Jaime Preciado. Preciado. I don't know why I put a C in there. I definitely butchered that. I'm so sorry, Jaime. Love you. And that's kind of the lineup. Mike was in the band up until 2017, right after they released their fourth album. But Mike did some not-so-lovely things, and we don't talk about him anymore. But he was important, obviously, for that first album coming out of Before Today. And then, you know, being part of the, the first album, doing all the instruments and vocals and stuff. So, but anyway, Karen's Convulsive. Um, like I said, for a single, this, was re- this video for it was released June 16th. I will say that I think this album has one of my favorite sounds, like, overall. Just out of all the Pierce the Veil albums, um, which I think is really interesting because I do really like, I like their sound overall just as a band. And this album, obviously, as I said, was only two people. Um, so like the, the, I think the direction might have been a little clearer. And I think for a debut, now given the fact that they were in a band before, that does need to be taken into consideration. But like for a debut album, it's very strong. Um, so Kern's Convulsive, I like the layering of him singing over him screaming the lyrics. I like screaming, but not too much. I do think sometimes it can get a little, like, they're using it just for the sake of using it, if that makes sense. Like, um, I feel the same way about, like, CGI in movies. I think when CGI first started, it was a really great tool, and, like, we were testing the limits, and now I think they just put CGI in everything just because it's there and they can. But I don't always think it adds something. Sometimes I think screaming can be the same. But I think as a band and as a vocalist, as a band, Pierce the Veil, and as a vocalist, Vic Fuentes has a very clear vision and a very clear direction on when and why he uses it. Um, but I really like when screaming is kind of like almost the emotional backing up of the lyrics. So when he opens up, he says, congratulations, break a leg tonight. What a shame. I heard the understudy died under the knife. And you've got him singing those lines, but also beneath that him screaming it just kind of as an extra emotional punch I think would be the best way to describe that and he says I don't think you'll ever want to love me and for some reason I always think he's saying I don't think you'll ever love all of me but kind of the same idea and I think this will come up the more songs we listen to obviously but I think it'd be very hard to argue that Pierce the Veil aren't like a they don't they write love songs which I don't think you'd expect and like that wouldn't be the first thing people would take away when they listen to this music. I think there's a very clear progression as the albums go along. Um, this one is a little bit more about a maybe a relationship. Relationships like aren't as good, and you're both kind of in bad places, and yada yada. Whereas as we go along, the relationships mature. You mature as a person, and that becomes clear throughout the lyrics. I really like Vic's voice, just not just in the song, just in general. I think he's got a nice tone, and he's very consistent. Um, I've heard a lot of people say he sounds very, like he sounds pretty much the same live. Um, I mean, it's 2023, they started in 2006, so they've been a band for going on like almost 20 years now, and his voice is very solid still. I still think he sounds the same, even on this newer single. Um, and then there's like a nice little carnival announcer type of voice that says, gather round, gather round. And for some reason that made me think of, I don't know if anyone knows this, but Tatrick Hall did, um, like a wizard of 
Oz. Yeah, a Wizard of Oz, like, sort of parody. Um, kind of like a concept video for his, or concept movie almost it was for his album. Um, and he's got a song in there called Green and Perez Hilton, I'm pretty sure it is, it's in there. And he does, like, a little announcer a voice for the song Green, and it made me think of that for some reason. But the carnival voice in the bridge says, Gather round, gather round, ladies and gentlemen, to come from far, come from wide. The moment you've all been waiting for. Tonight, join us as we explore the spine-chilling mystery of death and the miracle of resurrection. Which actually, it's really funny that the resurrection comes up because the new album is called The Jaws of Life, which is like the tool EMTs use to, I think like pry, it's like a tool basically to like pry the car open and pry like things open so they can save you. Jaws of Life. And so I think that's interesting that they brought up resurrection because I wouldn't necessarily say it's a primary theme in their music as a whole and then they've got two lines a couple lines here that i really like he says please understand me when this is right after the miracle of resurrection line he says please understand me when i'd rather see you dead than live without me so thirsty for more and then the best line in the song beyond the sea blue light i met the love of my life she'd rather see me dead than face me and so you're getting both sides of the relationship here whereas he'd rather see his girl dead then her not be with him whereas she can't even deal with him she doesn't even want to look at him so she'd rather see him dead than have to like actually face him so like again maybe not the best relationship very different places they're coming from here clearly and then he says i'm in love but not for long and i will i i love this look this is the beyond the sea blue light's like the third voice and i'm in love i'm not sorry third verse and I'm in love, but not for long is the end of the third voice, verse. And I would say that they have songs that as a whole are stronger lyrically. But for some reason, that third verse for me just really makes this song one of my favorites. Even though I wouldn't necessarily say it's anything to write home about lyrically for the song as a whole. But like that nice little ending, the bridge and the, the third verse, I think are really nice. And we've got a nice little halftime drum tempo on... um our operation which is again some nice layered vocals so i like how they play with the vocals in this song especially given that it's just him and then mike doing the backing vocals so you know they didn't have necessarily a wider range to work with as they will later on but the last line of the song i um i love when uh when the last line is just like the gut punch to the whole song even if the whole song was sad they're just like, let's really inflict damage on this last one. And I don't necessarily think this is like a devastating line, but I do think it's one of the more devastating lines in this song. Where he said, the last line is, for you I'd count the salt under the sea, which is just a beautiful concept. But a, especially if you're thinking about how earlier in the song he said, I'd rather see her dead, or rather see you dead, than live without me. And she'd rather see me dead than face me, but he'd still count the salt under the sea for her. I just think that's beautiful. I like that line. I like the imagery of it. 10 out of 10, no complaints. We'll hop over to the next album and song. As I said earlier, I usually pick like a middle point. So I picked the third album, which is Collide with the Sky. Collide with the Sky came out in came out on July 17th of 2012, and this was their first release with Fearless Records. So the first album and the second album were still with Equal Vision. So Collide with the Sky is with Fearless. And I would argue that there is an album theme. I think the themes of their album became clearer as they grew as a band, obviously. So I think the theme is like standing up for your loved one, even if that means you have to stand up for them against themselves. And also kind of an idea of standing up for yourself. And I saw that Vic was talking about the album out for the album art for Collide with the Sky, which is like this dilapidated house and this girl is like rising from it. And basically he was saying the idea is when like things are are changing very da- drastically and you can't really tell and, and like the idea of the girl coming out the house is you can't really tell if she's falling or floating so kind of this moment or falling or rising so kind of that moment of like just in between where you're floating and anything's possible i hope i didn't misquote him that is from my memory from what i read earlier but that's the gist so like i do think their themes became clearer so i think when you're standing up for a loved one even against themselves it can be hard maybe you're fighting with your partner maybe you're fighting with yourself maybe you're fighting with your partner about the relationship you're fighting with your partner about how they treat themselves you're fighting with your partner about how they treat you lots of ways and interpretations that can be taken and like i said i do think pierce the bell write a lot of a lot of, a lot of, a lot of love songs 
I don't know why I can't talk today. I do think they read a lot of love songs, so it's usually about the partner. Um, and like, I guess being in love is nice or something, you know? Uh, I would, I think people would be surprised by the song I picked off of this album because this album has a lot of like really well known songs from Pierce the Veil. So I would be remiss, you know, not to mention this is the song, this is the album that has King for the Day. King for a Day, King for a Day, you know, was having its heyday on the internet not too long ago. <clears throat> uh, and this is the first single off the album, which I thought was very smart because they released it like, I want to say like a month or two before here. Let me see. They released King for a Day as a single on June 5th. They started touring Warp Tour um, in July and August. And King for a Day, as we all know, features Kellen Quinn of Sleeping With Sirens. And so, like, what a great time to be touring a song that's got the, you know, and, you know, everyone, there was, like, such a big thing about Kellen and Vic and, like, you know, like the, oh, what am I trying to say? You know, they were two big bands in the scene. People really liked the idea of them being together. I think it was really funny because I think the song came out of the fact that everyone wanted them to, like meet up and be friends and all this stuff and I think I'm pretty sure I've seen somewhere like they didn't they had never spoken before like never really been in contact before the song but I'm very grateful for the song I think it's a great song I would be remiss not to mention it as I said also this album has a match into water which is um this was also having a heyday on the internet a little while ago because of the line she's mine you stay away from her it's not her time and people were using that for like a bunch of different situations um, so I, I like that line. I do like how it's delivered. Another good example, I think, of Vic screaming without it being too heavy, but really giving the emotional punch that the song deserves. And I, I, I might not even, at this rate, we're never going to get to the actual song I picked, but this album I has, has what I think to be, without a doubt, the best album opening and, like, song tra transitions ever to exist in the history of music. The album opens with May these noises startle you and you sleep at night. And he says, if you wanted to set me free, why wouldn't you say something? See, I was just over 17. Basically, it sounds like he's singing to his parents, but anyway, May these noises startle you and you sleep at night goes into the first actual song on the album. Because May these noises isn't a song song, it's more him yelling over music. Um, kind of like, I would, I'd say it's an interlude, but it, since it's the opening, not an interlude. Um, but it goes into hell above. And like, I could listen to these on like off shuffle over and over and if it weren't for the the brief pause and the track changing you would never know where the track actually where one starts and one ends and this is also how they used to open their shows i've seen some clips from live shows so they would start with made these noises start on you asleep and kind of play it almost quieter than it actually is on the album and then go straight to hell above which is nice and loud and a great song i think this album probably is their most popular and like most well known out of all of them. We'll see if that changes with Jaws of Life. I'm excited to see how that goes. Also with Collide with the Sky, this was their first headline tour. They went on after Collide with the Sky came out, so I thought that was interesting. They had been touring for a while, but like mostly supporting acts. Like I said, they were touring even before their first album came out, but they had a headline tour after Collide with the Sky. And so the song I picked off of here, like I said, wasn't any of the ones I mentioned as great as they are. I picked uh, Stained Glass Eyes and Colorful Tears. I just really like that song. There is one line and one like spot in the song in particular that really drove home while I picked this. And also, I didn't mention this earlier, but Pierce the Veil as a band are known for what's called like Mexicor, I think is the 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 term basically just due to the spanish influences vic fuentes and mike fuentes actually i think all of them now that i'm rethinking um they're all mexican mexican descent i hope i'm not misquoting anyone here um but basically yeah mexico so just kind of that just alludes to the the some i think this is also what makes them a dynamic band and kind of what sets them apart is they do have a bit of a spanish flair and like a Spanish influence, a little bit of Latin influence in every song that they have. Um, so this opens up with a very like Latin sounding guitar. Makes you kind of want to like, you know, dance. Um, 
The, another another al song on this album has a better example of this, which is Bulls in the Bronx, but I like the opening here. And then the electric guitar comes in, but you still, throughout the entire song, have this this acoustic guitar running this same melody, the same theme, the same tune throughout. Um, and the reason this one is because throughout the song, I will say I don't usually like when a song is repetitive and this song is a little repetitive, but I think it works because it almost sounds like a mantra he's trying to convince himself of. And sometimes it can be your, he's trying to convince himself and sometimes it's like he, he genuinely believes this and he's trying to tell you. He says, fine, maybe I'll pretend right now, but I swear to God, I'm going to change the world. And someday we'll tell ourselves, oh my God, this is paradise. And so I was specifically about the change of the world line. That's what really drove it home for me is this me picking this one over any of the other songs on the album. But for the someday we'll tell ourselves, oh my God, this is paradise. It feels like, like he's waiting for a future day, but it doesn't necessarily feel like there's any despair or any, any chance it won't happen. I think... This is a theme that I've seen in lots of places. Basically, you can't live in the future. You have to, you have to live your life now. Even in so, you can't be like, when this happens, I'll be happy. When this happens, I'll be happy. And so he knows he will be successful, but he's not necessarily waiting on that to to make his day. If that makes sense, he's not waiting. He's not gonna be like, when I'm successful, then things will be good. Things are good. But even if you don't believe him, things will be better, and he will be successful. So I just that uh, honestly that is that is the entire reason I picked the song over the other ones. Um, I just like the visual imagery of the title, stained glass eyes and colorful tears. The title. He doesn't get very heavy vocally in this song either, so I think this is a good song if you're not too much into that sound and you kind of want to a taste of what the sound of Pierce the Veil is. If anyone's interested and hasn't heard this before, I think this is a good song to start on. Um, when I was initially prepping Eleanor for the idea for this episode, um, I was trying to decide which of the singles off of the new album were like the least, like the heaviest actually, so she could listen to that. And if she couldn't handle that, then we wouldn't listen to the album. But if she could, then, like I said, I I um I imagine when you release a single, you won't necessarily release your heaviest song, but you won't necessarily release your like lightest song. You know what I mean? You probably release some good middle points to appeal to more people to get people to listen to your album. And also give, you know, you want to give a wide, if you're going to release multiple singles, you want to give a, a range of kind of what your album's going to be about to give not just you, new fans, but like your old fans an idea of what to tune into. Even the old fans, like me, myself, will listen to it just because it's Pierce the Veil. This is the Their new album, we need to get into finished Stained Glass Eyes and Colorful Tears, and then we'll get into the new album. Uh, I really like the vocals and the verses. They sound kind of transcendent, almost like... He he really extends the note. I guess I can't sing. I don't I don't do singing things. So, but I think he's like he like kind of draws out the lines, not overly so, but it, it, his voice is a lot is very soft and melodic and nice, and it's not it doesn't carry the heaviness that you would think. As a whole, I don't think the Quintes' voice carries heaviness, but his he carries a lot of emotion, and I think that paired with the style of music is what makes it so effective and what makes it stand out just that bit more that gives Pierce the Veil their their edge so to speak and like even the instrumental break in the song is quiet this is definitely one of their quieter songs um like I said tad repetitive but I really like it I think it's nice I think if you if you want to dip your toe into like Pierce the Veil without their early stuff is definitely a lot heavier so if you want to dip your toe into it and like just even just check it out and see I think Clyde with the Sky but specifically this song Stained Glass Eyes and Colorful Tears is a good good little place to start but we'll get into the jaws of life now which is their new album comes out today or it came out today actually february 10th so as you're listening to this it's out so you can listen to it after this episode let me know your thoughts i will be listening to it as well so i'll try and get back to anyone who comments um this is their fifth album it's the first album in seven years misadventures was their fourth studio album that came out in 2016 so Jaws of Life came out in 2023. Yeah, I do believe it was supposed to come out sooner, but then, you know, the world fell apart for a little while. Um, because I did see that Vic Fuentes was like working on songs as early as 2018. He was writing stuff, but then they had to stop touring and then, you know, you couldn't really meet up. So the from what I've heard about the process, it was a it was a long process, but definitely a labor of love. And kind of I think in some senses 
the pandemic was good in terms of changing how you work and not that like you have to change like people needed to change the way they were working but sometimes when like not even when you're in a rut but there's no harm in like changing changing your mindset and changing how you approach a task and like the pandemic forced people to do that um because you never know what you're gonna get like you know even if I even if I'm doing school work moving from one room to another really just can change my productivity in a matter of minutes so like you know just kind of changing how you approach the process and how you bring things together because they had no other choice anyway life fell apart album took a while to come out it's here now we're very grateful um as i said earlier the jaws of life is the tool used in emergencies so you know kind of this idea of life saving i do think because of the scene they were in and the types of relationships he was singing about it was a lot of i think a lot of the relationships and like the things people related to could be about having to save your own life when you think life is horrible and terrible um but i guess i guess life gets better when you're older and in love and stuff because as the songs and as the albums go on it becomes more hopeful and less like we're trying to save each other and we are the only people who can save each other because of our love and yeah it becomes more of like life is good and life is wonderful and we need to appreciate that and that's what will save us at least that's how i feel um like and Vic has said this um so the single that we're going to be talking about is the first single off of jaws of life which is past the nirvana but the other two singles were Emergency Contact and Even When I'm Not With You. And Emergency Contact, Vic Fuentes was saying, I saw an interview, basically he said he just remembers what it felt like. And like the first time he wrote down his wife as his emergency contact, like it changed from whoever it was before. And it's now like the person he's decided he wants to spend the rest of his life with. And so just that idea of like having someone support you, but not necessarily being the only thing you are there for because that's not fair to them that's not fair to you past the nirvana first single i was very i was very much looking forward to this single because again we hadn't gotten new stuff from them in six years and i go through a phase once every year i wish i was joking usually around like like when it starts getting cold like that time of year um where i listen to pierce the veil just on a loop like all of their albums this year um oh i guess 2022 last year i was listening mostly to selfish machines which is their second album and a flair for the dramatic their first album but like there's just two three months out of the year where i just kind of have them running on repeat in some capacity don't know why again whatever you are obsessed with when you're 13 14 15 is just gonna come back and haunt you for the rest of your life but in the best way possible i'm very grateful that pierce the veil i think they're great uh so we've got pierce the, pierce the nirvana i really like when the drums come in in the beginning but it was overall especially at the opening when i first listened um i've heard it a couple times since um, but it was slower than i expected based on their sound and misadventures i felt like was a fast-paced album from what i can that one i don't know as well i don't listen to that one as much but from what i can recall it was a bit of a faster paced album especially like the more popular songs off of it um but so this was a lot slower than i was expecting coming out the gate but again i think you want to give a range of options for your singles and i think emergency contact and even when i'm not with you aren't like they don't all sound identical to past the nirvana and i like the line he goes even if you if you didn't come home injured would you say it was a good show I also had a hard time pinpointing what this song was supposed to be about, but, like, songs don't always have to be about things, you know? So, um, but, yeah, he says, if you didn't come home injured, would you say it was a good show? Because every single day I try to roll my eyes and breathe, and then we get some yelling, and then we get some of the heaviness in, and kind of like almost a feedbacky, like, you know, when the amps get feedback sort of sound in there, but very subtly, it's not, like, distracting, it just kind of as to the ambiance of the song so to speak and we got some screams into the chorus of this song but i feel like it, it lacks the intensity of the screams he did he had before and i don't think this is fair for me to keep comparing it to the previous songs but for this episode in particular i'm just trying to give like an idea of how the transition has happened throughout their music and also again we've been, been waiting you know six years for new music from them so kind of just 
what I, and, and actually this single came out right around the time I started my yearly listen to them. So just kind of what I had in mind from their very heavy older stuff with the first two albums to this was not a huge jump, but like I wasn't expecting the jump. And I did really like, there was a nice like, like raw bass, I'm pretty sure it is, um, sound running through it. I love a bass. We all know I love a bass. I could talk about the bass for years. Nice raw sound running throughout. I don't I don't know how like if you listen to it and I use the word raw, it will make sense. But I don't really know what the technical term is. I wish I did. I wish I could speak about musically as beautifully as it sounds, like as the music sounds to me, but unfortunately that area of my education was sorely neglected. Long story short, I wouldn't rank this as like up in my favorite Pierce the Veil sound, you know, but I know it wasn't what I was expecting them to put out after six years, but looking back at it after I listened to it the first time, and especially now that I've listened to it a couple of times, it makes sense in terms of they have grown as artists. They're, you know, they've grown as people, obviously they've had life happen to them. I think they all got married at some point in time between these albums. Um, Vic Fuentes is expecting a baby. So, like, it makes sense for growth. I thought after so much time off, they would revert back to their heavier sound or their older sound. Just in, a, just in an attempt to, like, recapture that, I suppose. But that would be, at the end of the day, I think that would be lazy. And also considering that it wasn't, like, they wrote the album and they were like, oh my goodness, we haven't done anything in six years. We need to write an album. And then they came out with this. It was, they've been working on, like they put out Misadventures in 2016 and they started writing this, as I said, as early as 2018 I've seen. So like, it, it was a gradual process. It wasn't like, they were like, we took a lot of time off and took a long break. We need to get back to our roots. It was, they were working and evolving continuously over these six years. So... Um, and as I said earlier, I don't think they'd like release their heaviest song or necessarily their lightest song. I could be wrong. Maybe one of these is the heaviest or lightest song on the album. I know lightest is not the right word, but you know. So I'm excited to listen to the album today and uh, see how my theories hold up. I think there's going to be one song that sounds like a probably could probably fit in closer to not even Selfish Machines or A Flare for the Dramatic, the first two albums, maybe Clyde with the Sky. It's kind of like the middle point, you know, it's still heavy, but giving you a nice connection to Misadventures. And while Misadventures was a fast album, I wouldn't necessarily say it was their heavy, like, you know, on the heavier side. They definitely have gotten, I guess, less heavy overall as time has progressed, but not in a bad way. So, um... And I'm excited to see the themes. I still think they're going to be like writing love songs and be romantic. But like I said, I do think things are getting more hopeful. You know, the idea of like when your wife was my emergency contact when he first put her down. Or on Misadventures, they have a song where he says, picture you and I selling daylight for gasoline. So kind of like, we just need the two of us. We can run away together. As long as I have you, I'm happy. But not in a, you are the only thing that I have that makes me happy. And, and life is, you know, so... I'm kind of excited to see what themes are touched on there and how relatable it is. Because, like I said, I was listening to this music when I was 13, 14, 15. Big Fuentes just made a post the other day about how he's going to be 40 today. Oh yeah, happy birthday, Big Fuentes. Oh my goodness. Big Fuentes is just having a great February 10th, okay? It's his birthday. I think he said um that his, his baby's due date is today. Um... So he's going to turn 40. His album comes out. He might have a baby today. That's crazy. Anyway, um, so I'm just kind of excited to see what sort of themes come up and like if they're still relatable, because I think a very powerful tool of music is being able to write about personal experiences and making them relatable to everyone. So I obviously am not almost 40 and married with a baby. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited to see how, in what ways their lyrics and their sound hit me. Anyway, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go listen to The Jaws of Life. Please listen to The Jaws of Life. Comment, comment, comment down below what you think. Um, you can also chit-chat with us on Instagram. I don't quote us on that. 
our TikTok. Also, don't quote us on that. And we're on Twitter as well at don't quote us on that 27. So any any place you want to send your ideas, your thoughts, your feelings, suggestions, if you have any, uh, please do. Yeah, I could talk about Pierce the Veil for hours. So um, I'm, say, I'm doing you a favor by signing off now. So if anyone wants to keep chit-chatting with me, feel free to do that in any of the places I just mentioned. Uh, the comments, if you're listening to this on YouTube, you can comment down below. And I, and hopefully at Lenore. We'll see you next week. If it's not Eleanor, this will officially become the Kalina show. And I don't think anyone wants that except me. So please pray for Eleanor's speedy return. Thanks for listening. And I will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Don't quote me on that. One day we'll have an outro, but it's not today.